Hey guys. So we've been out in the rice fields, all different seasons of the year, all different times of day, middle of the night, <laughs> first thing in the morning. So now it's last thing in the day, end of the day. The sun's setting somewhere over there behind all the rain clouds. It'll be dark soon and it's really wet and pretty cold. <laughs> so that's what's going on here. We, the rice fields here have been uh, harvested and then turned over and that's it. They've been left now. Nobody will be back here until next year. So not a lot happening out here at the moment except for some weird guy at his car. So just before we get, to get started talking about how Japanese TV sucks, um, just want to acknowledge a couple of things. First thing is that we have to acknowledge first that, that television, a lot of television in most countries around the world sucks fairly badly. Most of you guys would, uh, would uh, agree with that probably. Um, so that's the first thing we have to acknowledge is that TV in lots of countries sucks. It's not just Japan. Uh, also, I have to acknowledge that some Japanese TV is pretty good. Um, so, and it, it depends on your tastes, of course, but, but one thing that I enjoy is the fact that, that they, they have movies and, uh, they'll have sort of movie themes where they have all the, all the Harry Potter movies one after another. They did that recently every week. They had a Harry Potter movie or, you know, they have movies on there that are, that are good, um, anime, anime movies, and they'll, they'll go through a, a, a Ghibli thing where they have Totoro and they have a whole heap of Ghibli movies, one a week, every week for a, for a while. So there's some good movies. There are some good game shows. Some of you guys would have seen all sorts of funny game shows from Japan. Some of those are reasonably amusing. Um, so we'll acknowledge that first of all. <laughs> Um, and then the other thing is, oh, I've done it again. One second. If I leave that door open, it gets too windy for you guys. It starts to get noisy in there with the wind. The other thing we have to acknowledge too is, is often when people first come to Japan, they quite enjoy television because J television obviously is sort of a, uh, a little microcosm of Japanese culture and Japanese language. So when you first come to Japan, you know, some people think when we first come to Japan, we find Japanese television absolutely fascinating. So I know I did when I first came to Japan. I was fascinated by it because it's so different. You know, it's because it's just Japanese culture and Japanese language and Japanese culture and Japanese language is so different to just about any other country in the world. So they're obviously Japanese TV is going to be so different to any other country in the world. So, so at first it is rather fascinating. All of it, right? All of it. You can turn on any channel and anything can be happening. It could be ads. You could sit quite happily sit and watch television commercials because it's all fascinating. You know, when you first come here and you first turn it on, it's fascinating. And, and, and also, obviously, a really good way to learn some of the language because you find yourself sitting there listening and, you know, when you're a beginner with the language and you hear a word and then you hear it again and you hear it again and you hear it again, what is that word? And look it up in your dictionary, oh, okay. And you've just learnt another word because you keep hearing them say that same thing again and again and again. Um, so it can be, when you first come here, it can be quite fascinating to, to, to see all the different things. Uh, and then obviously it's also a little bit of an insight into Japanese culture and a Japanese language. So, so there's that, there's that when you first come here. However... <laughs> What most of us find is, as you've been here longer and longer, is you get sick of it. You know, it's, it's, it starts to wear on you. So I don't actually watch a lot of television anymore. These days when I see TV, I saw some today, and that sort of set off the, the, this writing here, this list of stuff, because I was actually sitting in a doctor's clinic today, and they had television up on the wall, which they often do. Doctor's clinics, dental clinics, um, uh, bars and restaurants and all sorts of places will have a TV going in the corner um, and so I see TV when I'm in places like that also in my home there are people in our home that watch TV and I'll find myself walking past um, just a little tip too uh, a mistake I used to make was as I slowly got sick of Japanese TV I'd sometimes make derogatory comments you know walk past and sort of oh, what's this rubbish you <laughs> know 
And I stopped doing that because obviously that's not real fair on the people who are enjoying it, you know, and, and they'll be sitting there watching something. And so I stopped doing that because I realized that was, wasn't a good thing to do. Um, it's hard sometimes though, um, but I still think it, you know, quite often they'll be watching something and I'll stop and I'll look at what they're looking at and watch a couple of minutes of it. And, oh yeah, it's this, it's that, it's that formula it's that formula and oh yeah and not say anything just look at it and realize what it is and then just walk away quietly you know (laughs) that's the best thing to do because it's all the same it's rubbish it's rubbish so i'll just consult my notes here a moment um yeah yeah very different to other countries yeah 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 um some people love it because of those things yep it's all feel good and pro status quo right so it really is most of it it's very very rare to see anything on Japanese TV that's going to make you feel bad. They try and avoid it. They really do. I mean, obviously now and again on the news, there'll be some tragic thing. You know, some truck driver was on his phone and ran down some kids that were crossing the street because he didn't see them because he was on his phone or something like that will will be on the news or something like that. You Obviously obviously on the news, there'll be, there'll be things like that. But the rest of it, they just, everything, they, they want you to feel good. They want you to feel good. And, and, and we've talked about Japanese TV. We've talked about Cool Japan. If you haven't seen that already, Uncool Japan, I think I called that video. And our videos and our channel is actually featured on Cool Japan. And it's 100% positive stuff about Japan. And most Japanese TV is like that. They, there's no... You know, in a lot of countries, the television programs, some of them, like documentary type things, can be quite critical. And I think... Was it American? Was it Thomas Jefferson said that our freedom is reliant on the freedom of the press? Something like that. Our liberty is reliant on the freedom of the press or something like that. And sort of talking about the essential role that the media play in keeping the government honest, basically. And you don't sort of see that. Investigative (laughs) investigation, investigative journalism is something that I can't remember seeing here. It might exist, I can't remember ever seeing it. You know, it's just not what they do. You know, or, or, or journalists getting some politician or some sus guy on, on TV and, and grilling him, you know, tell us about this, tell us about this. You just don't, sort of don't see it. You know, they don't want, they, don't, they avoid confrontation, they avoid anything that's going to make the viewers feel bad. It's all sort of got to be positive and up and how wonderful Japan is and how wonderful life is and and faff, just light, fluffy entertainment that is just, you know, stuff that stuff that in another country you might see on television for a couple of minutes. They'll pull it apart and analyse it and talk about it and see it again and replay it again and over and over again. You know, the one I saw today while I was sitting in that doctor's clinic is they actually had some, some young people doing parkour you know, in some place designed for it, so like a gymnasium. <coughs> and they had walls and climby things and stuff to practice parkour, you know. And they're all practicing it. And then they go back to the studio, and the people in the studio are sitting there, and all these sort of middle-aged people in their suits, and, and people that obviously have never done parkour or anything like that in their lives. And oh, interesting, isn't it? Oh, it's interesting. And they go back and show you the video again. And in the corner of the screen, we've showed you this before, the corner of the screen, there'll be a little little square in the corner and they scroll through the people that are sitting in the studio and you'll see them sitting there looking, they're watching the monitor and they're, so they're watching what we're watching, they're watching these people doing parkour and they're sitting in the studio going, oh, interesting, oh, interesting, oh, interesting, you know, and they all have the, 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 the same reaction to everything. And, and that's the other thing is, everything has to be positive and everything has to be everybody agrees everybody agrees everybody watches that and agrees that parkour is interesting you know Um, and the food thing is really common if you flick through the channels on Japanese TV there's a really good chance you'll come up with someone either cooking food or eating food and not just food cooking programs where they cook it and go oh look at that isn't that excellent but then they'll they'll be eating it big close up shots of, of people sucking up noodles or or, or, or putting something into their mouth, really close up shots. And then without fail, they all go, oishi, you know, it's tasty, it's tasty. Except for one funny guy who will say, umai, which means tasty, right? So they all say it's tasty. I have never seen anybody taste anything 
and say anything at all other than it's tasty. They'll never say, oh, it's a bit too salty for me, or, you know, I'd rather it was a bit more salty, or I'd rather it was a bit more something. Never. Never anything critical. They all rave about how, how tasty it is, how tasty it is. All of them. And you'll have eight people in a studio sitting there, these semi-famous people that they call talent, and uh, that are famous for stuff that most people can't remember what they're famous for. They're just, they're just talent. They're just personalities. And they'll sit there and they'll all get a bowl of whatever this is, and they'll all taste it, and there'll be close-up shots of them eating this thing. And then, oh, it's all so tasty. All of them say that. You know, and if, if there's a video of something happening that, that's a bit scary, they'll all say it's scary. It's sort of like it's sort of like everybody's got to agree on what they think about it, but also you can tell quite often that the responses are fake, you know, and they don't even sort of try. You know, if they're all supposed to be amazed, you know, some sensei, and this often happens too, is that the people in the, in the studio are sort of, even though they're talent and famous people, They'll be, on that particular topic, they'll be ignorant. And they're quite happy to all sit there and be ignorant about it. And, oh, and there'll be one guy there who's the sensei, usually a guy, sometimes a lady, but usually a guy because of the Japanese patriarchal society is usually the knowledgeable sensei guy is usually a guy. And, and that, that guy will be there telling them about something. And they'll all be sitting there going, oh, so this guy, oh, and they'll all be being amazed, even if they're not. I mean, there's got to be, quite often when the sensei is talking about something, there'll be people there that you for sure they know about that topic. For sure they know about that topic, you know, and for sure that's not really amazing to them. But if they're all acting amazed, they'll all act amazed. Oh, so this guy, oh, really, is that right? Oh, that's amazing, that's amazing, you know? And it's just the, all this uniform. And, and this is why, after you've lived here for a while, it just so, it's all so fake and so fluffy and so insincere and so irrelevant. I, irrelevant, you know? They'll, they'll take a... And I mean, every, every country has those, um, those funny video shows, don't they, where they get the home videos, you know, the fail videos and things. You know, but usually they just let you watch them pretty much, you know, but here they've got to, they show it again and again and they go back to the studio and they all talk about it and show it again and, and again with those little image, little box in the corner showing you the reactions of the people in the studio and again and again, you know, quite often they'll have something like the parkour thing and they'll be talking about it and talking about it and I'll go off and I'll, I'll sort of pass by the TV and my family are there watching it and I'll go somewhere go outside and do something, come back 30 minutes later, and they're still talking about the same thing. And so you've got to be, you're still talking about that. You know, on, on an, on an, in another country, maybe they'd show that funny video and go, isn't this funny? Check this out. But, you know, like at the end of the news, right, they sometimes do it, don't they? Just before we go, hell, look at this funny thing, you know? And everybody laughs, and that's the end of it. But here, they'll do it again and again and again. It's like, really? 30 minutes later, they're still watching you that? So what else have I got here? Yeah, feel good, status quo. Um, simple things explained at length. That's the other thing is <laughs> those sensei that are explaining stuff, you know. It's like the, the other people in the studio will be pretending to not know anything and, the, and the, the sensei will talk, whoever the expert is on whatever t topic it is, will talk like they really do know nothing. And it's like, come on, you know, just really pitched low. Really pitch stuff low, like that, that you know, that, that nobody is going to understand anything about this simple topic, you know. Um, yeah, simple things explained at length with predictable reactions from semi famous people, <laughs> is what I wrote here. Um, pretending to be surprised, excited, uh, or scared, or oishi, right? So that's all those reactions. Whatever it is that's happening, if it's, if it's supposed to be a scary thing, or a tasty thing, or a funny thing, their reactions are exactly the same and exaggerated. Exaggerated, and it's obvious that it's exaggerated. It's obvious that, that it's not a genuine reaction, you know. Quite, you, with exceptions, of course. Um, um, dubbed stuff. Simplifying. Extra sounds. Yeah, yeah, that's another example. If, if, they, if you get something like, an example is Tom and Jerry. Just as an example, the dubbing thing. They take Tom and Jerry and 
and dummy it up. You know, like Tom and Jerry or another cartoon like that. There's not a lot of sounds, right? Like boing, twang, you know. But but the Japanese version of that, it's always huh, eh, nandake, huh? and it's all dumbed down more, so that all the reactions have to have an extra sound effect for you, so that you understand what the reaction is. So if Tom and Jerry are surprised or scared or whatever, that's exaggerated too, which is weird. Um, the next one I've written is the name and the and the and the, the age. You know, on TV in most countries, when someone's talking, the, their name will come up with whatever their position is, whatever their job or title or whatever. Here, they almost always have the person's age as well. So here's Mr. Yoshi Hirohito, who's the, the president of this, you know, car company. But he'll say, Yoshi Hirohito, uh, Yonju Hapsai, or Rokuju Hapsai, if he's the president of the company, you'll be old man. But they always put their, nut, their age, and it's because in Japanese culture, they always like to know how old a person is to get some idea of where that person sits in relation to them. So, so people knowing other people's age, and men and women too, the women don't get, get out of it either. They're, up comes their name and their age, and it, it's really common. And, they, and they'll get those talents sitting in the studio, they'll, up comes the name, and you'll get some bimbo from AKB48, you know, and she's 18, and then you get some old, Oji san funny old dude is 68 and, and up it comes their name with their with their their age next to it which is important to them really important to them whole shows watching youtube videos and talking about them too much yeah well that's what we talked about before done to death um old people in suits watching parkour yeah conformity everyone agrees and nods they're yeah, the nodding thing They'll sit there, and they know when the camera's on them, of course, so you'll be watching something, and then they come back to the studio or that little box in the corner of the screen, and the, the, the person who's, been, who's being shown in the box will be sitting there nodding, nodding very sincerely at whatever there is they're watching. You know, they'll watch... They'll do a story about a factory that makes plastic cups. And this is no exaggeration. This is true. I've seen stories exactly like that. How do they make a plastic cup? And they go to the factory that makes plastic cups, and here's how they press plastic cups, you know. And um, and the, the, the little box in the corner, and the people in the studio are sitting there really fascinated and nodding, sitting there nodding and all looking at the screen and nodding, because that's what they're supposed to be doing. They're supposed to be interested, and they're supposed to be nodding with how interesting it is. And they're all nodding. And they show the guy sitting next to that guy, and he's nodding. And the girl sitting next to him, she's nodding. They're all sitting there nodding. You the boss of Zoku? Out in the countryside, one boss Ozuku riding around on his own, he's going to make a lot of noise. Uh, uh, what's that say? Oh, no investigative ju journalism. Yeah, that's right. Uh, like vaudeville, I wrote. These, these notes was actually in the doctor's studio. It's like vaudeville. Vaudeville, you know, you get those stand-up things with the two guys, the old vaudeville, like uh, Laurel and Hardy or... Um, those old, you know, Dean Martin, Jerry Lewis type, 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 two guys being funny. You get that on Japanese TV here still, and really slapstick stuff where they're slapping each other on the forehead, and and really predictable. Nothing surprising, nothing interesting really. Um, any, what? Mm, mm, don't know what that's. <laughs> Uh, what else we got? Watching people eat food, yeah, the oishi thing. The close-ups on the food. It's bad enough watching people eat food, but the close-ups are obscenely close. Really, really close with the camera, you know, watching them eat. Terrible dramas. Television dramas are really popular. Japanese ones and Korean ones and other ones. Terrible. Um, romances. Romances with tragedy, like... Um, like uh, uh, what was his name? Romeo and Juliet type tra tragedies, the Shakespearean tragedy type stuff, tear jerking stuff. They love tear jerking stories. That's the other one they do with the predictable reaction. They show some tragic story about some young kid who's dying of leukemia or something. And here's this funny thing too: the contradictions and paradoxes. On one hand, they always want to show people stuff that makes you feel good, but they also get this sort of a enjoyment from this. M morbid stuff sometimes where they show these tragic stories about kids or mothers or just sad stuff and they come back to the audience and they go back to the studio and these talent in the studio are sitting there dabbing their eyes and tears in their eyes you know because of this sad story and because you know 
you know, real compassion in Japan is pretty rare. And it's just sort of like, this is sort of an excuse. They probably have no compassion with the people in their lives. But here's an, here's an opportunity to sort of be compassionate about someone that you don't even know. You know? It's, it's, it's so insincere. Not to say that tears are insincere, but it's just... It's like, okay, for a moment now, let's, let's show some emotion. And even then, it's not sort of terribly genuine, you know? Uh, you have to see it to believe it. A lot of this stuff, people who are living here at the moment will probably sit there going, oh, yeah, 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 I've seen that. I've seen that. Um, mosaic faces and <laughs> disguised voices. That's the other thing, that the privacy thing. And it, we did a myth video once about how people think that it's illegal to show people's faces or voices on Japanese TV. It's not, it's not illegal. It's just an amana thing. It's an etiquette thing. And they'll disguise people's voices and they'll mosaic their faces. And sometimes it gets ridiculous. They'll be out somewhere interviewing someone who's a witness to something and they'll mosaic their face. They'll disguise their voice so they sound like a Disney character. And then they'll, they'll mosaic all the buildings around them so that nobody knows where they are. So you'll have a whole screen sometimes fully mosaic with a disguised Donald Duck type voice talking. And it's just like, what's the point of that? <laughs> You know, what's the point of that? Uh, pretty pretty delicate young boys with brown pretty hair and lipstick um, in samurai movies. So you get this modern, like the old samurai movies are different, but the modern samurai movies, you get these young dudes that are really pretty with the long pretty brown hair and the lipstick. I don't know if it's real lipstick or not. Sure looks like lipstick. And these delicate little boys um, with their, you know, playing the samurai. And... <laughs> And it's just like, what's, you know, sometimes I'll catch that, oh, it's a samurai movie, and I sort of stand and go, oh, it's a modern samurai movie, you know, and some pretty boy's standing there having some scene with some girl, and he's being the samurai, and it's like, oh, look at him, isn't he pretty, you know? So, not that there's anything wrong with pretty boys. Pretty boys are fine, but it's just a bit unbelievable when he's trying to be a tough samurai, and he looks like a, a pretty hair model or something. What do I got here, midday? Oh, the funny thing with the time, for some strange reason on TV, when they show the time, 12 midday will be 0000, and 10 minutes past 12 midday will be 00110. So they're using the 24 hour clock wrongly, incorrectly, and they do it on all the channels. Don't know why. Don't know why. So 12, uh, 30 minutes past midday will be 00030. But I don't know why they do it. They do it on all the channels. It's like the 24 hour clock confuses them. Then they will say, for 3 p.m., they'll say 15 o'clock. You'll hear that here. 15 o'clock, 16 o'clock. And they mean 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock. Weird. Um, Japanglish. Japanglish uh, makers and spreaders. Let's charangi. Sun, Q, Bedi, Machi. So, so um, television, Japanese TV, has a lot to be responsible for a lot of Japanglish. Um, because you'll get either TV shows or individuals on TV here that will use things like, oh, oh my God. So, some of them say, oh my God. So at the moment, you've got all these kids and, and adults running around Japan going, oh my God, because there's some character on TV who says it. Some guy on TV says, oh my God, oh my God, and, and stuff like that. Let's challenge Let's challenge means let's try to do this thing. Um, San Q Beri Machi is a popular little joke here. San Q Beri Machi. So they're responsible for a lot of the Japanglish. I'm just watching the clock because we're about to run out of time on this video. Um, intelligent foreign documentaries dug with silly anime voices. They'll take a really good quality an uh, documentary made in another country. Maybe a Dave, uh, Richard Attenborough or one of those really good documentaries, you know. And they'll dub it with silly little anime type voices and dumb it down and destroy it. And then, and then have the, the little box in the corner with the people in the studio audience nodding and come back to them and talk. To, instead of just letting us watch the, anima, uh, the, the, the documentary and come to our own conclusions or, or have our own experience of it, it's got to be this group experience with these clowns in the studio, you know. So the rain's picked up. Anyway, you get the idea. <laughs> you get, I could sit here all night talking about all the silly shit on Japanese TV, but you get the idea. Um, so, yeah, when you, if you first come here, you haven't been here before and you first come here and you're in a hotel somewhere, you'll probably love it. 
Um, but stay here for a little while and slowly you'll get really sick of it, you know. And people have been here a while. Some, some, no doubt there'll be some people watching this who've lived in Japan for years and love TV here. Quite possibly. It, it really depends on your tastes, you know. YouTube's a good example of that, isn't it? What's popular and what's not. So anyway, time's up. Hope someone found that slightly interesting. Rain's coming down now. I'll turn off the lights so you can see. More videos coming soon.